Well, good afternoon, everybody. Ken Johnson here in the Weather Center with you, and we just wanted to—I just wanted to bring you up to date on what's going on with the weather. Um, been a few minutes since I've done one of these, so just wanted to um, jump in here and uh, kind of talk about the situation at hand here at this time. And if you have any questions, make sure to answer them. Uh, as of right now, all is quiet, and I'm not seeing much in the way of uh, thunderstorm development at this time. So uh, we got time to answer some questions. Of course, I'm not dressed yet, but I will be here soon. I've uh, been busy here in the weather office putting together graphics and going over data. So we got this tornado watch in effect um, this afternoon uh, and into the evening hours. Uh, so far, though, we have what's called a, a strong cap in place. So it's not an ideal setup for a lot in the way of severe weather, to be honest about it. Um, you've had a lot of cloud cover across our skies this afternoon, which is limiting daytime heating some. In fact, I can show you what temperatures are looking like outside. Give me a second. Let me pull that into my show here. Um, well, I got to find it first. But um, the, the cloud cover has uh, kind of limited daytime heating. And most places are only running in the mid-70s. I mean, that's not, uh, that's not, not cool. It actually uh, very nice temperatures. But to, to really foster... Uh, big severe weather with the kind of environment that we have right now to help break that cap. And I'm going to explain what the cap is for those of you don't, that don't understand it coming up here in a few minutes. You'd really need to see these temperatures well into the 80s. I don't think we're at 80 in Seymour. I think most places are running somewhere in the mid-70s. Maybe a little warmer to the southwest of us. Um, the dry line this afternoon is well west of us. And I'll try to show you that here in a moment. But this is my thinking. If we get storms, and, and, and it's not a done deal that we will see storms. I think we will get them, but you know it really just depends on this cap. This cap in place is really, really strong. I think the best chances for these storms, um, you know, probably a couple of supercell storms would be basically from about Childers, Quanta, down through Kroll, maybe Haskell area, maybe over towards Paducah. And then as they move eastward, maybe Vernon, Seymour, Throckmorton. But again, the, the issue is going to remain that the, this area, especially over in here, is, is pretty well capped. So as any storm that develops over this way moves eastward, it's going to encounter a, perhaps encounter a less favorable environment across the east. So these storms may have a tendency to weaken as they move east. But uh, nonetheless, from the Storm Prediction Center, that is, Tornado Watch is in effect uh, basically, it does not inc it is not included at this hour Lawton, Duncan, or Warica. So that would be Comanche, Stevens, or Jefferson County. It does not include Monte County, Bowie, Nicona, St. Joe, not in this watch. Jacksboro, not in this watch. No part of the Metroplex uh, is in this watch. The counties that are under this watch, however, would be Young, it would be Graham, Archer City, Henrietta, Wichita Falls, Vernon, Seymour, Throckmorton, Knox City, um, up towards uh, the Kroll area, Quanah. There's uh, Altus up that way, and there's Childress, and then back to the west is uh, currently where that uh, that watch is at. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So uh, we're looking at that tornado watch. Then again, that's in fact until nine o'clock tonight, and that comes from the Storm Prediction Center. And that's going to be um, if we get storms to develop. I still think our main concern with thunderstorms that would develop would be hail, but there there is a bit of a uh, of an increase in the low level wind shear late this afternoon and early this evening. And if storms could perhaps overcome that cap. Um, for a little while, then they might have a chance to produce a tornado or two as they move eastward. I don't think that's the highest threat by any means, but uh, certainly can't be totally ruled out. So if we uh, take a look at the radar this afternoon, there's nothing going on. Uh, there might be some light showers uh, to the south uh, east of us there. What you're seeing is high level moisture. Um, if you walk outside, a lot of clouds out there. A lot of those clouds are cirrus clouds and associated with cirrus clouds or high level moisture and that's really a limiting factor on this uh, particular uh, potential event, which is good. That's a good thing, right? We don't, we don't want severe weather. We don't want the big hail. We don't want the tornado threat. So um, the cap is certainly a, a, in our favor today as far as that goes. Uh, we're looking back off to the southwest, and the uh, weather information that we look at to help us make our forecast has been pretty consistent in developing storms um, late this afternoon. I'm talking about uh, after 5 or 6 o'clock, kind of down into this area and then kind of moves them to the north and to the east there as we get into the early evening hours. So we'll be watching that area. Dry line is kind of roughly kind of 
kind of back into here. So along that dry line is where storms would initiate first. Uh, if we look at the satellite, this is the visible satellite. And um, it does show perhaps maybe some thinning of the clouds in some places. So there's some small breaks in there where the sun may peek through, and that may warm us up a little, but I, I don't think it's going to be enough to really overcome the, um, uh, the cap at this hour. So I think, I think that uh, this sun would, needed, would have needed to have came out earlier in the day. So this still limits the amount of daytime heating and the amount of energy or instability that can build up. But there are some little breaks here or there. I do see, as you get closer to the dry line out here, some, some more significant breaks, um, especially kind of down here to the southwest of Knox City. And, uh, you know, again, your dry line's kind of somewhere over into this area here. And, and if you kind of look a little bit, you can almost see some brighter white clouds in here. That might be what's called agitated cumulus clouds. And before a uh, thunderstorm develops, the cumulus clouds, they begin to grow and get agitated. By agitated, I mean the uh, tops of them start to begin to get a little bit harder, a little bit crisper. And uh, eventually that, that, uh, those clouds will break the uh, cap and they'll get a thunderstorm. And you do kind of see a little bit of that popcorn-like cloudiness out into this area here. None of that over our way. There might be some, but nothing uh, is showing signs. There's, there's actually no, no lifting mechanism over in this area right now. So no chances for storms here, at least anytime soon. The only chance will be kind of back over in here early on across the, this dry line area. So let's go over what we have in place this evening. Um, of course, we got a, a strong storm system, but that strong storm system is well off to the west, and that's kind of also a limiting factor. If that storm system were to come through, um, let's say this afternoon or early this evening, then the threat for severe weather would be higher, okay? And last week at this time, and this is why long-range forecasting or even medium-range forecasting for weather or severe weather is very, very difficult to do. It was showing this strong storm system moving out in the afternoon and evening hours. So this was going to be uh, the system that timed up with everything perfect. Uh, we wouldn't see as much of a cap, and uh, that would have led to a bigger severe weather event. But most of the time, what happens with these systems, most of the time, these big systems like this, they wind up, they wind up slowing down. Uh, and at least across our part of the country, they usually move through late at night or early in the morning, which is a negative factor for big severe weather. So we got the big storm system, but it really doesn't roll in until late tonight. So that's kind of a limiting factor. We're going to go with the L here because that's a limiting factor because it's too far to the west as of right now. Um, there is a little disturbance kicking out ahead of it that's going to help, that might help break that cap, but uh, it, it, that's not the main storm system. Now, the winds are very strong. This is very strong. That's in the upper levels of the atmosphere, actually throughout all levels of the atmosphere, very strong. That is a positive for, you know, for thunderstorms to develop. You get that strong wind aloft, it helps, helps pull that, uh, that instability up, and it helps to, to foster and fuel the updraft of the thunderstorm itself. That's the... That's, that's key right there for getting big, severe weather. Uh, we do have wind shear in places where the uh, low and mid-level winds, they're, they're causing some twist in the atmosphere. Uh, oftentimes, we'll get some uh, mid and upper level wind shear, but the low level wind shear is lacking. But in this case, we have it all. But again, you can see my question mark here is the instability or the energy. It's called CAKE, convective available potential energy. All right, so uh, potential energy is energy sitting still, not moving. Kinetic energy is energy in motion. So if we look outside this afternoon, there, there, are, there is some potential energy trying to develop, but above that potential energy is that cap. So that energy is down here, and it can't be realized. That, that cape would have to be forced up in order for uh, thunderstorms to form, so in, in order for that uh, convective available potential energy to become kinetic energy, and that's just not the case as of right now. Uh, but you do got that dry line back off to the west. And there's actually a front late tonight called a Pacific front that will be moving into place. And that might help trigger a couple of thunderstorms, but I don't know that we're going to see a lot with that. So if we take a look, this is what the cap is, just in case you, and just in case you uh, uh, may be a little bit confused here. So if we uh, take a look here, so uh, throughout the day, you've got warm air aloft. And um, above it, um, to get a thunderstorm, you've got to have cool air. So down at the Earth's surface, you've got warm air. But above it, you've got this warm air. So as it lifts, remember the parcel of air that's rising to become a thunderstorm has to remain warmer than its surrounding environment to remain to lift, to continue to move up. 
But as it moves upward, it hits this layer of warm air and it can no longer rise because this layer is warmer than that parcel of air, so it can't rise. So uh, as the day heats up, the warm up graph forms and as long as the temperature keeps falling with height, the air will continue to rise. Uh, if the updraft though hits a layer of warmer air, it is, un it is unable to continue upwards to form a larger cloud or thunderstorm. So um, when we look at um, the atmosphere, this is kind of what it looks like over here when we're doing, we're forecasting soundings, it's kind of this over here. And uh, you can see the surface, cooler, 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 boom, warm, so it can't grow. So there's your cap right there, that's your cap. So let's take a look at what it would look like if it were uncapped. So if you were uncapped, let's say we had sunshine today and the, uh, the air continues to warm. So we have that uh, sufficient heating outside. Um, so, or there's an area where the warm air cap is thin or weakened. So let's just say there's a couple of areas that uh, the cap's a little bit thinner or it's not quite as thick. So this allows the cap to be broken. So in, in general, you gotta have the warm air, the warmer air at the Earth's surface to help break that cap. Um, sometimes if you have a strong enough uh, storm system moving into the area, the air will be forced up through the cap regardless and you'll still get storms, but they're usually, they usually struggle a bit. And then sometimes you can get a really strong updraft and it'll be able to overcome the, uh, the cap itself. And sometimes that keeps storms real discreet and can make them, you know, make them extra strong. But in our case today, since we don't have that upper level system in the area, this is what we're looking at right there. Now, Let's take a look at what the weather information does suggest, though. This is from the HRRR. If you take a look, this is the latest update. This is 630. There are those thunderstorms trying to form down to the southwest. But look at what happens as they move east where they're having a hard time. They're hitting that cap, and it's just not as much. Now, there's a storm around 830, perhaps a bigger storm maybe near Haskell. But again, the storms are just really, really struggling because of the cap. So again, with what I have drawn, my area that, uh, that I'd be a little more concerned about for at least a couple isolated severe storms would be kind of over into this area here. Hail, high winds, and maybe a brief tornado or two. And then late tonight, here comes that front I was talking about, the little Pacific front moving into the area, but uh, there's not a whole lot of punch with it. So even though the upper level system's kicking out, you know, uh, that cap has just been too strong and those, those storms that might develop this evening might, might pull some of the energy out of the atmosphere. So I don't know that there'll be a lot of storms at all tonight. But if there were storms that were able to form in the middle of the night, they'd probably be really severe. We don't get a lot of tornadic activity here or big severe weather here in the middle of the night uh, just because uh, you know, it just the, the, the atmosphere here is just not good for it. You uh, wind up with uh, usually what happens is at night the Earth's surface cools and the thunderstorms kind of root up higher in the atmosphere or they, they can't form at all. Uh, but uh, this is a scenario I think that if we didn't have the early evening activity here, then the uh, nighttime activity would have a potential to be stronger because it uh, a lot of parameters would be in place. Rare to see that here in this part of the country, not rare to see that over in the southeast where they get a lot of nighttime tornadoes. But here we could see that. Um, but again, I think we're going to be protected a lot by this cap and what's going on here this evening. So I, I don't even know that everybody will even get rain. You may not even get rain where you are out of the system here. So, but we're going to keep an eye on it anyway. We're going to keep an eye on it anyway. And uh, we've got uh, Cameron Lindsay, who is our weatherman cam, better known as weatherman cam, who's out in the storm tracker. He's uh, currently in route to Paducah, Paducah, Texas, which is just out of my view in here. Oh, actually on the, cor on the edge of it there to try to intercept those storms as they develop to the west there along the dry line. So, um, you know, the hail threat, I, if we do get a hail threat here, uh, Nikki, it would probably be small. And see, people ask about timing. And, and, and in this situation, again, this is a scattered, this is not a situation where we're tracking a, a line of storms. I cannot tell you what time it's going to be to you because you may not even get a storm in this situation. Um, you might get um, uh, the, the time frame for severe weather, and again, this wouldn't be a, a time frame that you're definitely gonna get wet, would be this evening, probably after uh, you know, six or seven o'clock, anywhere in the area, but mostly across the west. All right, Eric, be safe, buddy.
Yeah, I try to educate you guys so you'll kind of have an understanding for what's going on, you know, and, and as you hear me say so often, there's so much bad information that's just out there on social media that gets, uh, you know, it's just, it's just the, 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 the age that we live in now. Um, so there's just so much bad information that's out there that, um, that I'm trying to give you, and it's hard as a, as a, uh, somebody who's been doing this for a long time, it's really difficult because I am giving you the right information. I am giving you the good stuff. But those guys that are out there on social media blowing everything up outweigh me by a lot because I can't keep up with those algorithms on social media because I'd have to be doing the same thing that they're doing too in order for the algorithms on uh, social media to like me. So their nonsense gets spread around like wildfires while you know, TV meteorologists like myself and like the guys up in Oklahoma City and down in Dallas and the other TV stations here in town, um, you know, they're the ones that are getting... Um, you know, their stuff doesn't go out as, as, as significant because we're play, we're telling you the right information and the algorithms don't like that, so. Thank you, Chelsea, I appreciate that. So, but yeah, that's our slogan here, no hype. The weather without the hype, that's what we do here, so. But I'm not overly concerned about this tornado watch, to be honest about it, especially for Wichita Falls. Um, maybe a little bit more concerned west of here if we get those supercells. But even there, I'm not 100% certain we're going to get them. I think we'll see some storms. I think we will. But that cap, man, I just looked at the uh, special uh, special sounding that the Weather Service did at Elk City, Oklahoma. Uh, and uh, Elk City is located well, right there. And uh, what they do the, to do soundings, they, they, they launch a balloon, and that balloon goes up through the atmosphere. And it takes measurements. It measures things like temperature and moisture and wind, those kinds of things. And uh, it showed a really stout cap at Elk City. But again, over along the dry line out west, there, there, there might be a better opportunity. I'm looking down to the, remember, this is where the models are showing storms trying to form. It's kind of down to the west-southwest. Uh, but, you know, you still just don't see much of anything there. And the latest check on the cloud cover. Whoops. Um, you know, some holes are possible here. So it uh, looks like Cameron is in Kroll, Texas now, but there's just nothing for him to watch right now. Nothing. But there, but you can see it. Here are some uh, agitated cumulus clouds back in this area. Now, this area is not as favorable for severe weather, but if they can get going and then kind of make their way up here, then, you know, you might see them have a better chance to be a little bit stronger, uh, perhaps over in here. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, there's also some weather information that's been kind of showing this afternoon that supercells that would develop back into this area here would have a tendency to move right and move kind of either just probably along or just north of uh, the Abilene area along Interstate 20 and kind of towards maybe Breckenridge or maybe towards PK or down towards Graham. So that would be something to watch. Supercells typically do move right, but the strongest ones do. But I'd watch this area back here. That's the area I'm going to be focused on this evening and see if anything can get going. So once again, I don't know that everybody will see severe will see a thunderstorm. I don't think that everybody will see a thunderstorm, um, and I don't think that everybody will see rain even. So um, I just I just believe that um, that most of us are going to be okay with this. But you know, just keep an eye on it because out west there could be a little bit. Oh, and I wanted to show you guys how to keep up with things and um, how to how we're trying to do things here now. We're trying to limit unless it's something real serious, the amount of severe weather coverage over CBS, because we know you got TV shows you like to watch and things you like to do, and we hate, and I don't, trust me, I don't like blowing up your programming, I don't. I know it, I know it aggravates you. So we, we're trying to get away from doing that unless it's real serious. But um, the way that you watch me, and I'll be off here in just a minute, is um, uh, you, the First Alert 6 weather app. Hey, what's up? Um, First Alert 6 weather app is one way. And uh, we have our new 24-7 channel. I think it's uh, Digital 6.4. Or if you have a Roku TV, you can go to the app, our new Channel 6 app. You can find us there. And it's basically the same thing. You're just going to see uh, basically the same thing as the 24-7 channel is that what you see on the Roku app. Um, you can go to our website and find us on there. I think you, uh, go, to, uh, uh, I think you go to a live tab. But um, you know, any of these apps you have will we'll get us there. Plus, we'll be on social media, uh, Facebook, um, you know, also um, uh, YouTube, 
those are the ones that we kind of kind of been doing at this time anyway. But overall, um, I don't expect to do stuff over CBS unless it's something serious from here on out. So that's that's a good thing. All right, everybody, we all have a great evening. And I am going to, uh, my, uh, my morning meteorologist, Jaden Knowles, just showed up. I'm going to touch base with him. And then I'm going to um, finish getting ready and getting dressed and getting ready for the show here tonight. So we'll, uh, I'll have updates as needed throughout the afternoon here uh, and evening um, as needed. So I'm just reading some of the, the questions here. And uh, so William says he's just not seeing it. And I agree. I mean, and really, uh, William, nothing has ever, outside of the, the long range stuff last week, nothing has shown this being anything significant. And, um, you know, and I'm not calling out anybody by name by any means, but there were some, uh, even some TV meteorologists that were even screaming out loud things yesterday. And I was like, you know, that guy knows better than that. He's a great meteorologist. Why is that dude sitting here saying he knows better than that? So. I guess I guess it's kind of uh, one of those things you can't beat them, join them kind of thing. I guess I don't know. I won't. I'm not doing that. I can't. I just it just is against my morals. So, all right, guys, I'm jumping off of here. Y'all have a, a great evening. Uh, don't be don't be overly anxious or whatnot about the weather. I'm not. Uh, remember what I say. If I'm concerned, you should be too. And right now, I'm not concerned. So, I'll uh, keep an eye on it for you though. And of course, I'll be back on any social media plus our 24/7 channel and our app as needed. 